Now you could you could search around YouTube. There's loads of people out there with their own theories of it. Of course, it, you'll be familiar, I suppose, with uh, Robag88. He's he's worth a watch. Um, I'd check him out. I'd check uh, John David Eber as well on the Shining. That's quite good about the astral plane and all this. And uh, Room Two Three Sevens that you know follows this same route. But the thing is, it. it <laughs> It doesn't start out well at all. I mean, when the guy says you can see Kubrick's face superimposed in the clouds at the beginning in The Shining, and you think, I'm, I'm there sat thinking, whoa, I can't see anything. And then that scene where Jack meets Holman for the first time, and, the, and they show it in 237 in still frames, and I'm thinking, hey, oh, what mega... Uh, uh, revelation is this going to be? Is it someone on wall or something? You know, and and then it freezes it as they're shaking hands, and that white stick there. That's supposed to be like Ullman's dick, and it's. I'm sat there. I'm thinking, fuck you now. This is going to be shit. This, but of course it gets better. And as it goes along, it's a bit like The Shining itself, it kind of draws you in and you start going, yeah, yeah, I can see, yeah, I can believe that, yeah. Room 237, moon 237 miles from Earth, you know, yeah, yeah. The only words you can make out on the ticket, moon room, yeah, yeah, that could be plausible, like, you know. <laughs> and I like that chapter in it as well, the enigmatic Bill Watson, because... When you see the film, it's like, what is what is he really doing in the film? He doesn't do anything, you know. He just kind of walks around and goes, hey, you're all right. You're like, yeah, fine, see you, bye. You know, and then just follows him around like a lap dog. Does absolutely fuck all. And it, in the film, of course, they've got the various theories of what, what's going on. But, so if, you, if you're into all this, uh, you know, going into meanings and elaborate detail and or film studies, you know, I'd and uh, Kubik's films. I, I kind of recommend that one, Thomas N Alan Nelson. This is an old version, this, so uh, it's been updated recently for include Eyes Wide Shut and all that. This just goes up to shiny. Uh, but it's like this phrase here. Bit of an anagram fan, you know, it's... In that context, Jack's history becomes symptomatic of an American withdrawal from Cold War uncertainty into apocalyptic self-indulgence and a denial of the social e existential imperatives of conscience and if you understood that you're cleverer than I am <sighs> you know I mean there's the scenes in that where he goes on about the uh, shapes on Elleron's pajamas and all this you know but to me with with this stuff it's kind of like there's a fine line between being interesting, oh, oh yeah, that's interesting, oh, I, didn't, I didn't know that, oh, yeah, yeah, that's all right. There's a fine line between that and getting into anorak territory, you know. Uh, I mean, like, like in Room 237 where they've got the film playing backwards and forwards, superimposed over itself you know and, you, and it's like eh? and this is the subtext the kind of the subtext that you get from room 237 is that to really get the best out of the shining you've got to watch it like 500 times and then watch it forwards and backwards you know simultaneously you know like some fucking anorak yeah. speaking of anoraks I once painted my bathroom red in homage, you know, here's a clip. English. Just uh, get in here, here. Thank you, here. Up here. Took me about a couple of days, this, in about October 98-ish.
What a fucking anorak. Yeah, but the thing is, right, that's like, that's been like kind of a, a normal anorak, isn't it? Because it's just, just liquor paint in homage to the film. Whoosh, red paint. Normal anorak. Whereas playing the film backwards and forwards simultaneously at the same time, that's like fucking double anorak, you know? I mean, where the fucking hell... Where the fucking hell did they get that idea from? They must have been on Magic Mushies or something like that, you know. Just get me still back there. And I downloaded a load of stuff from uh, YouTube as well and put it on a DVD, you know. And that's that. So I think that's about it, really. But, I'd, I'd you know, if... It, if you like The Shining or if you like Kubrick stuff, I'd, I'd definitely recommend all this stuff, you know. Uh, get, give Room 237 a watch. There's some interesting stuff in it. There's some stuff in it where you think, fucking bollocks. And there's some stuff in that that's pretty funny as well. Although probably not meant to be like that. But as a riposte to all the theorising, get onto YouTube for that Shining analysis by Dr John Cox. That, that's a classic, that. I, I couldn't stop laughing, you know. Awesome. One further thing as well. Because remember the uh, ballroom forter at the end, uh, January 1921 at the Overlook with Jack? Well, it's recently come out. I found it on this website. Uh, Badass Digest it's called, and it's an article by Devin Faraci, it came out in October 2012, where they actually shows you on it, who was the guy in place of Jack on that photo, you know, and uh, here, here he is. And uh, he is, uh, what is it, that's the guy who was in the original photo, and some bastard. <laughs> Uh, very, of course, uh, Rawbag88 has uh, chimed in with his own theory on, because he has his theories on uh, who's in the photo and all that. But who he says that is, I'm not really sure. I'm not, I don't think it's the same guy. Uh, the nose is different. So I think the jury's still out for me, you know, regarding uh, who that guy actually were. And uh, there's the article. It's it, it's about uh, airbrushing. It's from uh, some magazine, but Badass Digest. It's on there, so you can read it if you if you want to. All interesting stuff. But I tried to do a photograph of it, you know, and I tried to take a, uh, a frame from DVD, but it's not really clear enough. So luckily, I got it from uh, another one of my Kubrick books by Michael Cement, you know, and highly recommended book. And there's a a thing at the back of it of the uh, the ballroom forty, you know. Here it is. There it is in, in back at the book. It's a bit knackered now, like right? you know. Uh, but I put it in Photoshop, joined them together, and of course with the magic of Photoshop. Uh, I had to insert myself in it as well, didn't I? So, I'll, uh, I'll give you a look at that in a minute. And uh, that's about it, really. That's my review over. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you next time. And uh, I'll leave you with the uh, photo and see you in 1921.